Today, lots of jobs are advertised on the internet. But back in the 1940s, you could get recruited from your local shop window. Posters like these were used during World War II to enlist thousands of men into the Royal New Zealand Air Force. And the recruitment drive didn't stop there. Since the very start of the war, New Zealanders had fought in the RAF. As you can see, this middle poster here was targeting adult men, anybody above 18, to join the Royal New Zealand Air Force. And that these two posters were actually targeted at youths or lads, young boys, from between 16 and 18. You had to be over 18 to actually join the Air Force. So for these young people, it was a wonderful opportunity to get some experience and also to gain a trade, which they could use after the war. These posters are from the early 40s. So this one is from early 1941, and it was appealing to young boys from 16 and a half to 18. But in 1942, after the Japanese had um, attacked Pearl Harbor, the war really came to the Pacific, and New Zealand was very concerned about whether or not it would have enough people in the Air Force and in the Army in general. So from March 1942, it lowered the age to 16 to make sure there'd be enough young recruits coming through to join the actual Air Force. In the air war, the New Zealanders were always there. These young cadets were among the 40,000 men and women who served in the Royal New Zealand Air Force during World War II. But it wasn't only human recruits who took to the air. Well, the bear is Henry Fanshaw, or more correctly, Flight Lieutenant Henry Fanshaw. You could say he's a mascot for Royal New Zealand Air Force 75 Squadron, but really he's more than a mascot. He's the longest serving member of the squadron. He's been around really since the start of World War II. He went on bombing missions over Germany. The dive bombers get to work. And this is where the serious side to uh, Henry is. I mean, the role that 75 Squadron paid was really traumatic. A lot of young men were sent to their deaths, um, and if Bears could talk, um, he would come out with some, uh, some stories of uh, sacrifice, heroism, valour, the lot. In the later years, he was taken to Kuwait when uh, Gulf War I in 1991, when uh, we contributed two C-130 Hercules to the uh, effort there. In the latter years, when we had the uh, Skyhawk, we uh, gave him a conversion course on the aircraft, and of course, with that conversion course comes his Douglas A4 Skyhawk patch that he's wearing on his left shoulder. We had exercise in uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand every year, and of course, Fanshawe would go with us. We wouldn't leave him at home. He also had the habit of disappearing quite often from the squadron. Usually when we were being visited by uh, other squadrons from the Royal New Zealand Air Force or squadrons from overseas, and he, uh, he had this tendency to take off with them. And uh, next thing you'd get a, uh, a postcard or something from Henry saying um, how he's enjoying it, he's not missing us at all, he's been uh, to all sorts of exotic places around the world. In 2001, the number 75 squadron was disbanded, signalling the end of Fanshawe's tour of duty. He now lives in contented retirement at the Air Force Museum in Christchurch.